Welcome to DaVinci's Discourse, where the minds of today's most innovative entrepreneurs are unveiled and explored. And my name is Kyle Campbell, your guide on this journey into the depths of the entrepreneurial psyche. So sit back, relax, and get ready to dive into the minds of the greats. This is DaVinci's Discourse. Why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? I'm curious. If somebody were to ask who you are, what would you say to them? You know, bar, coffee shop, who are you? Oh, goodness. Um, That can get pretty existential, couldn't it? Um, I like it. Yeah, bring it on. uh, Yeah. Um, You know, honestly, I feel like I am my daughter's uh, full-time personal assistant. (laughs) I do what she needs and Uh I I take care of all of her scheduling. Um, uh, But it feels like my side hustle is um, being the director of social media at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology or um, MIT. Um, Yeah, I... Yeah, that's sort of me in a nutshell. I'm a working mom, you know? I love it. I love it. I love how you didn't answer what you do for a living. You went into the, the existential. It the, the clicked. Yeah? You were like, <laughs> I can go existential. I was like, yeah, I can. No kidding. Uh, yeah. So let's go the other road then. If somebody were to ask what you do for a living, let's get into the, the MIT road. Um, so what's the answer that you would give at a party or whatever? What do you? What yeah. Do you- well, I had uh, social media for MIT. I, um, you know, think of all of the... Um, strategy when it comes to the institute level and any sort of campaign or announcement with a presidential focus um, when it comes to social media. I manage all of the um, flagship, uh, you know, uh, social media channels. That includes like Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Oh, I said Twitter, X, (laughs) Facebook, (laughs) LinkedIn, um, Instagram, threads, and TikTok. Um, yeah. And I am providing consultation and um, direction for all of our department labs and centers because they all have their own social media presence. So, you know, for more than 260, you know, communicators on campus. So that's in a nutshell what I do. Um, wow. There's a lot of there's been a lot of more crisis communications that has become more and more a part of my job, especially um, since just before the pandemic and into the pandemic, I feel like there's always a new crisis that we're dealing with. Um, yeah, you know, and but that's just part of it. Social media is constantly an evolving thing. So yeah. it change it changes along with the landscape. How'd you get an MIT? It's fascinating. I mean, you don't hear that very often. Oh, I'm just, you know, the social media manager for MIT. How'd you, how'd you, <laughs> how'd you get into that? Um, well, uh, you know, I was, I was doing social media as part of my job um, at the, at, you know, the other school in Cambridge, uh, Massachusetts at, at Harvard Kennedy School. Yeah. Um, and I was doing, I was the editor of their, you know, website and their web content. And I was doing social media for the school as well, which the Harvard Kennedy School is the, um, is the graduate school of public policy and government at Harvard. And so I was also, um, overseeing their social media channels, but social media just started becoming more and more of my job um, as it does because social media, you know, takes up a lot of time as you, if you really want to do it well and it keeps growing. So, um, you know, I just had a thought, I said, you know, if I could do this full time, you know, wouldn't, I think that's how I would like to evolve my job. That's the next step I would take. And just as I was thinking it, um, the, the position at MIT opened up um, and so I applied and it just happened to be a fit. Um, but at the time, I think when it opened up, it was, it, they had a, a, a social media strategist, but, um, and she left. And I think that time they realized really quickly, you know, we need a manager. Um, it We need to elevate the position. So I was hired as a manager, but since then I was, um, I've been promoted to director and, there's only been the two of us, the my predecessor and me in this role. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and I'm I'm technically the first ever director of social media at MIT. So um yeah, it's 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 very cool. Um it's great to feel like I've had a hand in really growing our presence. Um but yeah, but it also took a while, right? Like it took a while for MIT to finally get a social media manager yeah. mm. um, and and really kind of take 
the perfect like find um the benefits of social media and why you should be in social media so sometimes higher ed takes a little bit of time to get around to concept new concepts but we eventually get there yeah they're eventually yeah no kidding they take a long time eh? but it, yeah. it got, you got there so so whatever it is yeah. what it is it's so cool like i want to know because you manage all of their platforms not just one so how do you come up with all yeah. the content for that it's a it's a big job Yes. So what um, I'm really fortunate in that um, like my position is the only position at the Institute of Communications that is 100 percent social media. But I'm a part of the Office of Communications, you know, the Institute and Office of Communications. Yeah, yeah. And within the um, uh, department, we have we have reporters, we have writers, we have video ah, producers, we okay. have graphic designers. And so I work with all of them to make sure I get um, like the social assets or what we need for social media. So uh, my job is not so much the creation anymore although there are still times where I just walk around campus and I'm like we need a TikTok so I'm going to create a TikTok today um hmm. but most of it is um is really taking the content we have and optimizing it for each channel so um you know it shouldn't look the same at, on Facebook right, as it yeah. does TikTok or or LinkedIn it shouldn't look all exactly the same so I make sure that our content um, really is how it should be consumed um, at, you know, the way it should be consumed by our audiences in each individual platform. So. How do you know what content is worthy of being posted? If you get, let's say, uh, an, a reporter or some of the other team members gives you mm -hmm. some content, how do you know what is is valid and is going to be re well received in the in the social marketplace <laughs> yeah well a lot um so a lot of times you know our um uh, you know the the type of people or uh, the people in our audiences that would follow mit they love science and robotics and engineering yeah. they're yeah. all sort of fans of you know um the stuff that i call our bread and butter content so when we have something about a robot or if we have like mm -hmm. this um uh, a kid breaking re uh, record breaking rubik's cube yeah. time or you know something yeah. like that i know it's going to play well um then then i have to you know from that you know it's going to do well but then i have to sort of make decisions on which um audience might prefer which types of content. So, you know, our LinkedIn audience really, they like to hear about, you know, um, scholarships and, and, and things where people are doing advancing and people are doing well. They like to hear about people features. Um, but then, you know, on X, it's, it's, it's more of the science and the research. And, hmm. and so I think it's not, um, you know, I, it, it, our, our audiences tend to, to you know follow us because they there are certain things they expect like research engineering science but then you know within each platform the audiences tend to lean one you know it it they kind of show us what they like and what they like mm -hmm. to read and yeah. it can it can differ a little bit depending on um depending on the platform so if x is more wanting to see the analytics and the the actual Mm -hmm. in mechanical engineering projects themselves what mm -hmm. are some other platforms that you notice because like we can take that and say for our own businesses we can post numbers and the analytics and, and kind of tailor our content towards the the numbers type of people for example mm -hmm. whereas on instagram mm -hmm. it might be the more creative visual types so yes. what, are, what are some other patterns that you've noticed if x is that what about uh, the, the other the other platforms like tiktok or facebook or instagram yeah so you just mentioned instagram we do um have a set that more of our younger alumni follow us on Instagram. So we do tend to post a lot of nostalgic or, you know, community, our campus, um, the room, you know, the, the, the actual buildings themselves and the library, you know, it's all, it's all nostalgic type of um, content that does really, really well on Instagram. We have one very, very iconic dome that everyone knows the MIT great dome. And I used to joke that we could, post a dome a day in Instagram and it would just do well. <laughs> it would, yeah, it would just do great because like people love the dome. Um, you know, um, it, they, they like to see the softer side, you know, mm. of MIT, like, like 
our pets of MIT do really well, you know, um, that, that kind of content plays really, really well on Instagram. Um, Facebook, it's a mix. They like to see the culture, but they also like to see a lot of what, what I refer to as our bread and butter content, like the research and the robotics and science. Um, TikTok is interesting because it is skewing, it is skewing more to the sciencey side. Um, but it also does like to see our, um, you know, student life and student, you know, um, just the flavor and the culture of MIT as well. So um, it's 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 like both of them do really well, but it's it's more of a broad, it's like they want to see the general um, life, like what student life is like. I, I found that if, it, if we do very specific features on one particular student, they don't always they don't always get as many engagement really? um, as much. I'm, yeah. Isn't that I'm interesting? Surprised. I'm surprised. Yeah. Because you look yeah. at say like a, like a, a charity for water in Africa, for example, it's they focus the story and their marketing on one individual. This yeah. child has to walk 10 miles a day and it goes through the, the process. And so yeah. it's one person. And so I'm surprised that it, this doesn't tailor over to, is, is that just, uh, is, is that just TikTok or is it like all of your political platforms? No, it's I feel like right now that's how TikTok and um a little bit of threads is is skewing too. They just they're not so Listen. interested in our features. Yeah. But it's huh. what it's that's that's why I always tell people you have to experiment. You have to try every you know, you have to try everything and and constantly try new things um to see what your audience really, really likes and prefers. Cause what works for you. Or um, you know, a nonprofit um, may may not work for us, but wh what works for us may you know may not work for others. So you just never know, and so Man. you just have to try all of the content to see. So once I just that's you know that's what I think I feel like my job is. I'm constantly experimenting and honing it down to see what type of what type of stories do the best. And I try to offer mm -hmm. our audiences on each platform more of that type of content. You know, I mean, there's some things that we do show them no matter what, like, you know, we want to show them what our president is doing. If we have like a new climate project, we want to show our audiences that. So, you know, um, we don't always just feed them what they want to see. Sometimes, you know, we do use them to showcase what we're doing and what they might not realize about MIT um, because they want us, they want, we want them to see, you know, the 360 of us, you know, yeah. of, of the Institute. Um, but for the most part, I'm always working to see what, what content gets the most engagement. And there comes an experimental phase with that. I mean, to find out that each platform likes to have a certain type of content, there was experimenting that went into that. And there will be more so as you move towards the future, seeing what people will continue to resonate with as opposed to what's working right now. And for that, yeah. you need constant iteration, constant testing. So the question becomes, how do you know what to test? And keeping it in a, in a way that somebody who's watching or has a, has a business in their own social media to manage, how do we know, and let's, let's take it to you, for example, how do you know what to experiment with to see what will stick how do you know what content will work or what to start testing with well you know sometimes it's just try it you know i yeah. mean there are so many things that i just have tried and it literally will get no engagement and i'll, I'll just go okay that did not work <laughs> <laughs> you know um but then maybe i'll try it at a different time you know once more but if it doesn't work two times or several times, then you know that, okay, that didn't resonate. Um, another way to find content is that you can see what your peers are doing. You know, we're, we're, we're watching Harvard, Harvard's watching us, you know, we're watching Yale. Stay. We're all watching each other to see what we're all doing. Um, just to, just to see what's working for other platforms or, you know, um, and, and maybe there's content opportunities that we haven't thought about. Um, by watching our peers and our competitors, I think there's an opportunity there for anyone in any industry. So, um, in you know, if you're a, a startup and you don't know what to start or where to start with, it's it's I think it's a really good idea to um, start following businesses that are similar to yours or are, are somewhat in the same field and just see what they're doing and see what works for them yes, and yeah. start there and just keep on 
trying different things, you know, like my colleague and I are always, you know, we're always kind of talking about content ideas and we're like, well, what about this? And what about that? And we're like, gosh, you know, I don't know, let's try it, (laughs) you know, or yeah. And so we're just always having those discussions. I wonder if you look at your competitors, let's say Harvard, for example, it's funny to be naming these names, Harvard, MIT as the competitors of, of each other. What if, what if <laughs> we looked at them? Because it's, those are high, na- big brand names, right? I mean, yeah. massively valuable brand names we're talking about. So how, what if you looked at them as as potential partnerships? Have you thought about the collaboration route of what a sort of a, a joint venture or something like that would look like? Or are there like, you know, red tape that would get in the way of that? How do you think about yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, not really. I, you know, I don't know if it would surprise you, but I'm really good friends with the uh, the Harvard social media team. Um, mm-hmm. There are a lot of times, you know, we're talking, if there's a crisis, you know, in higher education, we're talking with each other, we're supporting each other. Um, sometimes there are moments of collaboration. There, there are a lot of groups between MIT and um, Harvard that are collaborating different research groups, different education groups, um, sometimes scientists, there was a huge discovery, you know, the, um, the, the discovery of the black hole. Um, and so, and uh. the, the image of the black hole, the first like really, um, yeah. high res image of the black hole. And that was a joint venture. And we were saying, you know, we were sharing, you know, how do we share this on social? What are you doing? What are you planning? Um, how can we coordinate? So that does happen. Um, it's it's not that we are against it. I think that there just naturally aren't a lot of um, opportunities, but when they, when they are, when there are, we do um, like the, uh, the president before la- there's a interim, but the president before the last president um, was an MIT graduate, and so we, you know, said congratulations, and uh, you know, we gave a little sort of um, cheeky note on our social media pl- channels to wish him good luck. Um, so we do do those mm. things when they're when they pre- with the when the opportunity presents itself. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. And I want to let you know that I've got a free book that you can get if you want to tap into more of these resources. And you can get that for free at kylesbook.com. Back to the podcast. Right, because that comes down to catching trends or opportunities to take advantage of external factors that you wouldn't have been able to if you didn't catch on to that opportunities for the president, for example. Um, Exactly. how do you look at the the trend capturing phase? Because let's say that there is an identification of a new picture of a black hole that's fascinating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you look at the the opportunity to be able to, first of all, know what trends to tap into? And then second of all, be able to tell that story in a way that's captivating and really gets people to start sharing and engaging with the content? Yeah, well, with something like a huge discovery, we, I mean, I got, we know that's coming. Um, yeah. So we can com- prepare, but it's as different far as than like, most businesses, man, it's funny. Yeah, <laughs> like, like yeah. Of course, like, yeah, you know that's coming. But generally, um, speaking, you know, like t- tapping into trends in general, even getting right. on TikTok is tapping into a trend. There so- are a lot of yes, there's like a lot of trends that happen. But I don't know if you'll laugh, but you know, we tend not to do the trends, um, just because they don't, unless it unless it fits our personality and culture it really doesn't it sort of doesn't make sense for it you know I don't know maybe I feel like it will you know unless it fits our personality it feels too like we're trying too hard course, you know yeah, and if, if you're tr- if you're trying too hard it feels like you're trying to fit a, a square peg in a round hole and we want it to feel natural so things like you know pi day is a huge because we love numbers at mit you don't and say. <laughs> uh, yeah and we love pi you know pi is our favorite irrational numbers. So we love Pi Day, you know, like the birthday of Albert Einstein, which is also Pi. I mean, Pi Day is like just huge for us. Um, But anything with numbers or, but, you know, like trends that have to do with like the Stanley Cup or, um, you know, like dances. I get how it's got that force feeling to it. Yeah. 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 I get it. I get it. So, I mean, you've got something that you've captured the mind space of of something very fascinating. I mean, like you've got this 
the the way that I think about the brand is you've got the only one in the world and this one thing. And so I'm wondering how somebody who's watching would be able to take their brand for their company and be able to eventually, maybe hopefully one day, be able to start to formulate this um, this crystallization that you're the only one in the world or you're the mm -hmm. best in the world at this one thing. How do you think about that process? Yeah, you know, I I would say like just lean into your culture. You know, your your mm -hmm. startup or your organization or your group, you know, makes you you or unique for a very specific thing. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's you know every cult, it, you know every. I feel like every culture has its like love language. Every culture has its sense of humor. Every industry has its sense of humor. I feel like if you tap into that sense of humor um, and and utilize it, it can be very popular or and powerful because you know you're bringing in like minded people. So you know, I always say, don't try to don't try to do all of the things everyone else does. Don't try to be what everyone else is. Just, just do be you and lean into your, into your culture and yourself. And I think just, um, and let your people find you no matter mm. whatever platform you are, let mm. your people find you. Cause they will, you know, if you're putting con content out that speaks to the interests, your interests, the interests of your, you know, what you're, growing what you're building what you're forming you know people who are interested in that will find you there's something to be said about that for sure the other side of it is well if we're going to be modeling competitors like you said originally how where's the the dichot is there a dichotomy between the two how do they come together in terms of having the modeling the competitors to know what to start testing yeah and also yeah. embodying your own story your own unique characteristics not trying to take on somebody else's Totally. Yeah. And that's totally fair. That's a great question, actually. So like, say in higher ed, we want, you know, we're sort of watching each other. And, um, you know, Harvard does this great campaign every year. It's like, it's a hashtag Harvard in autumn, because their campus is so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they've got in the autumn, the leaves are beautiful. And, you know, well, you know, we, we, can't copy that because like it, it, our campus is very different it, I would say it's um you know they're they're very brick bricks and ivy and our our ours is a lot of concrete you know it's very it's very techy it, um it looks like the bridge of the starship enterprise you know, it's, more, <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's different so um you know we wouldn't be able to do that but if there's another campus that has gorgeous trees and scenery you know and, and it, it fits sort of the feel of their campus they can take that and run with it you know, so we can see and, and then but it'll be they can do their version of it. Right. Because um, their their campus is just as beautiful and you can kind of do it the same. Um, you know, there I know Yale has um, a bulldog mascot they called Handsome Dan. And if you have a mascot, you know, there's lots of schools that have mascots that have their own social media presence, you know, you can do a lot with that. So I think it's, it's, it's not so much copying, but seeing where the opportunities are, but you know, you can go, oh, wait, we have a mascot, we can do that too, you know, mm -hmm. but we're going to do, we're going to put our own spin on it and, and make it our own. I think that's, where the difference is right so instead of saying like oh mit in spring it's like yeah you just, you know, <laughs> right you just off yes. there. you're, you're yes. not looking at it like that what's the process that you look at being able to capture the ideas in the in the the future opportunities in terms of the uh let's say if you want to model harvard in fall but you don't have and it's, you also don't want to directly copy it how do right. you identifying like let's say you identify a campaign that works you want to model it what's your thought process look like in terms of taking that and being able to have it your own what's the how, where does your mind go when it comes to that yeah that I, I think I think, um, you know, one great thing about being at the institution, <laughs> I've been there for nine years now, like, uh, you know, you, you, I, you know, partially because I've had a hand in also um, developing the voice, like I know the voice and the tone yeah, and, yeah. and, and the per personality of our social media platform. So, you know, you just have to make it so that, you know, it feels natural. It feels like a good fit. Um, yeah. You know, um, 
you, you know, you gave the example of, you know, the spring, like, you know, the Harvard <laughs> yeah. and fall, yeah. but, you know, we might not call it MIT in spring, but we'll, we can say something like, you know, we're seeing signs of spring on campus and we can kind of, and get those little bits of you know, images and show the pictures of campus that do really well on Instagram, right? And so we can kind of do it that makes sense for us to do, you know, um, in instead of, and make it our tone and in that fits our, um, you know, our, our voice more um, yeah, and, and do that. Yeah. And, you know, again, like, all, you know, all artists and creators and filmmakers, we all get inspiration from each other. Yeah, you know, this right. is, this is definitely not new, right? Like authors and, um, you know, it's, we're all sort of, I feel like we're all iterating off of each other anyway, and we're all inspired by each other. And, you know, social media is where a lot of creation happens and a, a lot of, uh, you know, there are a lot of things like are expressed there's I mean it's it's I I'm amazed at how creative people can be and I, I feel like we're just drawing inspiration from each other it's beautiful you know there's I mean nothing in nature can work by itself everything works together and so you've got you're tapping into that naturally so one trend that came to mind as you were saying that is on Netflix right now there's a series called the three body problem and it's actually a, a lot of physics involved in this show. And so it's, it's number one on Netflix. And so I'm thinking if you wanted to tap into this because it's right up your alley, it's, it's fitting the psychographics of your target audience bang on. How do you think about tapping into, let's say, a trend on, on Netflix or would that be too tacky? Would you not go down that? No, road? actually, I'll have to look into that. But, you know, um, if it's like physics, you know, we have we have physics, you know, um, yeah professors on campus we can kind mm. of take we can you know find someone and ask them their version on it you know and their take on it um mm. so we can tap into the experts that we have on campus um yeah, cool. but yeah there's always ways that you can kind of you know f find the folks on your campus um that that make it fit you know, um, like I said, if you if you're if you're having to look too hard, then yeah. Um, th yeah, yeah, that's a sign that you're like, ah, oh, this isn't for us. But if you're like, oh, yeah, you know, we've got this professor on campus that can speak to that. Um, yeah, that would work. It's, yeah, it's a cool idea, right? And then for somebody else who has a business that who's not MIT or even running a university who can go to the instead of going to the professor, you can maybe go to another expert in the field or even a client of yours and share their story and their take on it. And that yeah. creates some compelling content, especially if exactly. it's related to the target audience. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And it's, you know, if, if it's, you know, you get to know, you know, the people that are in your audience or the people that you're trying to attract and, um, it, and you want to make content that speaks to them. Exactly. Right. And so you've talked about the psychographics, not only the demographics, but really the people who are interested in technology and in robotics. And what about AI? Like, have you have you gone into the whole AI realm in terms of using <laughs> it to, to I mean, it's, it's spread up your alley, but in terms of actually using it for the social media management itself, what are some ways uh, you've tapped into that? So as a subject, we've been talking about AI yeah. for many years now, just because mm -hmm. You know, we've got a lot of people on campus that are sort of are in in the forefront of, re you know, the yes. revolution of AI. Right. Um, but as an office of communications, we we and, and it's something that we have heavily been exploring. Um, we have guidelines on AI now because we want to be transparent and saying, look, all of the articles you read on our website are written by human. Yeah. All, you know, we've said we're not going to use any AI um, Im like images anymore. Everything's going to be like an it, like a real image taken by a photographer or an illustration drawn by a person. Um, so we're very transparent in that. Um, that it's it's humans that are creating the content, but you know we will use AI to help with alternative text or um, for a caption on an image. Um, I use AI as sort of like an idea partner, yeah, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I use AI 
Like I'm on, I'm constantly asking AI to like, like, you know, can you give me a synonym for this word? Yeah, or an <laughs> or, alliteration or, or it rhymes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Or, or I'm like, can you like, like I'll take five sentences I've written and I'll say, can you just make this into two sentences? So, um, so yeah. it's always the, it, the or origin is always coming from me, but I use it as an editor, thought partner, research, you know, to do, I feel like it's um like a Google yeah. but better it's a search engine so i i use it as a search engine too so i love it i love it it's so cool one of the things that i do with it and you can do this too because you've got such a large data source in terms of being able to take every mention of mit online what what we do for example is is i'll use you i'll use mit as an example imagine being able to to search for every every mit posting and every comment that's been below every mit posting over the last uh, let's say five years you got a huge source of data there you input that into an ai and tell it so what are some social media ideas that you think would be relevant and would be viral potentially based on the, what they're already talking about what's already on mm -hmm. their minds and then you can say wow. what's Right. And then you can say, oh, yeah, so if that's all, and then what are the keywords? What are they saying? What kind of language are they using? And then you can get a data file back of, of exactly what their pain points are, what's pissing them off, what's what they're frustrated about, because that's the stuff that gets shared usually, too. That's a great idea. Yeah, that is a great idea. So are you are you saying that you would you have to upload it into the content or would it scour the data for you? It's difficult. We do use it to scatter the data to scour the data, but it's it's it does have some scattering effect. Like there was an interesting slip there. I said, scatter the data because yeah. it's, it's, it doesn't have the ability to really get it in, in hand yet. So what I like to do is manually scrape it. Uh, we've actually got other bots that scrape the data too. And there are programs for that. Got get it. And then upload it as a file. Upload so it into, got exactly it, got it. What it okay. is and say, yeah, that's a great idea. The things that I want yeah. in this data file and, and it'll give you like crazy insights that you wouldn't have thought of. Uh, same yeah. goes for potential joint venture partners. Like you, it'll, it'll find trends of, of them talking about not only robotics and AI and, and that kind of thing, but also there might be a trend, for example, that the, the typical MIT student is also commenting because it, it can analyze their program, uh, their profiles. So mm -hmm. it'll say this person commented on this with this text, but it'll analyze their profile and say if they that person also commented on a uh, cooking uh, a cooking YouTube video, mm -hmm. and it'll find mm -hmm. patterns. So like if if a, a disproportionate amount of people are commenting on MIT or also commenting on let's say cooking, for example, it's a terrible example, mm -hmm. but we'll say it no, anyway, yeah, right. I, so I, it'll find weird. I, I, Patterns like that, and then you can yeah. tap into those audiences and say this. You reach out to them and be like, your audience is got some underlying psychographic similarities in my audience. Maybe we can work out some sort of a deal where uh, we partner with each other in some way. It might not be cooking. Maybe it's. Uh, um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's gardening. I don't know. I'm coming up with organic, <laughs> organic examples with MIT, I, but, but I like knows, it. Right? Yeah. yeah, no, I like it. No, that's a great idea. Th those are really great um, examples. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I love AI, man. It's so cool where it's going. So what's a question that I should be asking you, but I'm not asking you that if I were to ask, it would be able to provide a lot of value for an entrepreneur or a business owner watching based on your vast knowledge in the branding and yeah. marketing space. You know, I, you know, I, like you said, organic, I am a big believer in organic social media. Like yeah. it takes time, but I think that is uh, the best way you can actually build and engage and, um, you know, like a community, a community, that, like, a, a, a you know, a fault, like a group that you can actually call your community. Um, you know, MIT is completely organic. We've got more than 5.8 million active social media followers across all of our platforms. And we've been able to do it completely organically. And I feel like um, anyone can do that. You just you just have to be dedicated to it. Right. And you mm -hmm. just have to you have to want to grow, you know, grow your fandom online and have interest in it. And it takes time. But I do believe it is doable. I love it. Very, very cool. So, I mean, you're fascinating. You went through some interesting, some interesting viewpoints oh. today in terms of the, <laughs> I appreciate the way that, that. You look at social media marketing. It's very cool. So thank uh, you. So thank you. Seriously. What else do you have to add before we kick this off? Um, I, you know, I, I just, you know, you know, I, I would say social media is, 
it can be very divisive, especially yeah. these days. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I think you have to love it in order to do it. But yeah. I think for me, you know, the reason why I do this, it's my profession. I spend so much time with it is that, you know, there's, there's just so much clever and witty and insightful and funny things um, that people are posting on the internet, you know, like there, some of the most creative things I, I've seen are on the internet. And I just think, oh my gosh, people, it, it shows sort of like, you know, while it can show a toxic side of humanity, it shows a really creative and funny side of humanity as well. And I still very much believe in that side. So here I am. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you're contributing to the good, to the that side of things as opposed to- I appreciate that. You, right? So it's a very important. So Jenny, I had a blast with you. Thank you so much for being here. Seriously, very cool individual. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I really, I really learned a lot from you. I'm going to, I thank you for the AI tips. I'm really going to look into that. So. Check it out. And then also check out the three body- problem because that'll be perfect yes to tap into that it's like it right Thank up you. the alley of mit seriously it's it's, it's cool. yeah i'll check Great out the tip. social media channels i'll see if, if you post anything about it I'll be like, okay <laughs> sounds good <laughs> all, right. all right jenny all awesome right. talking with you we'll keep in touch okay thank you thank you all right i hope you enjoyed that podcast episode and if you want to get a free copy of my book go to kylesbook.com and you can get a copy there i'll talk with you soon